the champion of self-sabotage. What exactly does the champion of self-sabotage do? Well, I certainly don't use these ears to receive information, friendly advice, or even encouragement. I stubbornly and blindly plowed through my life completely independent, self-sufficient, and unaware that there was a better way. Have you ever felt completely alone and dedicated to finding out your own way of doing things and completely lost? It is a sad fact that even as recent as 50 years ago, most people had five good friends. Today, in the age of instant access to people all around the world, most people are lucky to have one close friend. I adopted the belief as a child that I was going to be better off if I figured out how to do things myself. I didn't dare interact with the other children on the way to school because they were busy picking on my older brother who was producing awkward and bizarre behavior. I felt excluded, alone, helpless, frustrated, and ashamed. I hated my brother. Frustration doubled by the time I was a teenager. I figured out that my family was the problem and I came up with the solution. And that solution was to join the circus. On the circus, I found a fascinating family. They sparkled, they were active, they were buoyant, and they were always on an adventure. I became fascinated with what they enrolled the animals to do. And I began to learn from the animal trainers and gradually, I even developed my own performing act with six ponies. The combination of receiving large amounts of approval from the circus audiences mixed with my low self-esteem and my fierce independence, and that is what set me up for the fall. Late one night, after giving two shows, driving through Western Ontario, I fell asleep at the wheel. Oh, shit! <laughs> the wreck of that truck changed my life in an instant. I couldn't keep up with the circus. They kept going. I was rejected by my pseudo family. The next thing you know, I was stranded in a foreign country. I was broke, I was ashamed, and I was completely helpless. Reluctantly, I turned to my parents to ask for help. By this time, they had found a vibrant community in the Ozarks, a community based on spiritual growth, nutritious food, baking nutritious bread, and finding ways to be of service to one another. My parents welcomed me with open arms. In that community, I found acceptance, approval, love, and they demonstrated how to interact with other. I became part of the flow in that place, and it was fun. I, as part of the dish room team, pushing the racks full of dishes through the steam sterilizing thing, I became familiar with my teammates, and we had fun. We would 
alter the words to some of the popular songs of the day to have fun. We will, we will wash you. <laughs> and in that environment, I became familiar and connected and I tasted my first taste of humility. Working in the bakery was fun. Every once in a while, the master baker would take a loaf of bread from the assembly line and break it in half to inspect it. That loaf became a perk for the workers. And I learned to go get myself a big chunk of it and go over to the 55 gallon drum and open the spigot and saturate that piece of hot bread with honey. And while I was eating that nutritious snack, I learned from the master baker. He told me that God loved me just the way that I am. I didn't have to perform. I didn't have to do something to receive my value. I didn't have to recite some vague mantra to receive some promise that's off in the future. I had the ability to begin to embrace the concept of, of being loved just the way that I am. There was another man of God that introduced me to the idea of becoming a conduit. A conduit is a channel through which something flows back and forth. And I had tasted contribution as the result of being in this community and becoming one of the teammates. They encouraged me to start to rebuild my life. I returned to the circus. I became en en ennobled and I began to learn from horsemanship masters. I created a an astounding act with a jet black mule. I took an American saddlebred horse to the top as a dancing horse and won an award at the international competition in Sarasota several years ago. And as you all know, I became a mural artist and today I'm a pinstriping artist of the highest caliber. And today I love my brother. He's the one who introduced me to Toastmasters. If you have ever felt a lack of confidence or are tempted to separate yourself in an attempt to negotiate the twists and turns that take place as we go through this life, what I encourage you to do is to take a step, walk through the portal of change, embrace community, <clears throat> reach out for the help that you need. Meet me for lunch. Whatever you do, don't stay that way because together is how we move forward as conduits and the next thing that will happen is you will be living the life of your dreams. Yeah.